Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In a recent video, renowned investor Jim Rogers delves into the intricate web of global economic trends, shedding light on the alarming levels of debt, declining populations, and questionable policy decisions that could lead to unforeseen consequences. Rogers, with his vast experience and historical perspective, draws parallels between current events and past instances, cautioning viewers about the potential pitfalls that lie ahead. In this video, we will explore Rogers' insights, covering topics such as the economic challenges faced by countries like Japan and the United States, the dynamics of political decision-making, and the ominous specter of war that looms in the background. Rogers begins by highlighting the perplexing situation in Japan, where staggering amounts of debt coincide with a declining population. He expresses disbelief at how a nation can continually accumulate debt while simultaneously facing demographic challenges. Drawing a parallel to the United States, he questions the sustainability of such practices and emphasizes the importance of being vigilant about economic policies. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. They have staggering amounts of debt, and they have a declining population. That's not a typo. Declining population for several years, debt going through the roof, and every day they go deeper and deeper into debt, and they print more and more money. Now, these are successful, educated people, like Americans, like people in what? Well, I guess the people in Washington are successful and educated people. But in Japan, we have educated, successful people. And I say to myself, how can they do this? How can they go, go every day and print more money and run up higher and higher and higher debt with a population in decline? Adam, they do it. They do it. They're human beings too, just like you, all of us. And it is happening before our eyes. So strange things can happen with politicians and always have throughout history. And don't think the people in Washington are any smarter. I've been around Argentina a long time and I've heard it many times, many times, where the Argentinians elect a new guy or somebody comes riding in on a white horse with very sound policies and actually does them. And they have, they have reverted or converted to the U.S. dollar at times in their history. I've heard, it's not my first rodeo, Adam. I've seen them, I've seen this movie in Argentina before. And he says wonderful things. Let's see, we can ask me in three years, ask me in five years. Okay, but it's you're not perfect. gonna hold your breath he's, is what you're saying though. He's saying all the right things. He's saying good things, not all, but he, mainly what he's saying is very sound. Let's see. Each day is not enough of, of a change, and you barely notice it. Six months later, six years later, you say, oh my gosh, how'd this happen? What do we do now? And I guess that's the way human beings are. You, you have the same insights that other smart people do. Okay. All right, eventually, well, eventually it happens and we throw in the towel and say, we've got to do something. Usually in history, there comes a time when even the headlines are, oh my God, what do we do next? Yep. You know, it, you remember Cox's army, you know, in the thirties, military veterans marched on Washington. I'm talking about the United States of America, military, American military veterans marched on Washington, called Cox's Army. Drawing from his experiences in Argentina, Rogers discusses the tendency of politicians to make grand promises, only to see a gradual deviation from those assurances over time. He acknowledges that while some leaders may articulate sound policies, the actual implementation may fall short. Rogers encourages viewers to remain skeptical and observant, reminding them of the cyclical nature of political rhetoric. Rogers takes the audience on a historical journey, referencing instances like Cox's army during the Great Depression, where military veterans marched on Washington. He points out that current headlines may not reflect the severity of economic challenges, but history has shown that unforeseen events can lead to social fracturing. Drawing parallels to Argentina's history of economic collapses, Rogers hints at the resilience of nations facing adversity. 
things were pretty bad. And those headlines are not happening now. History that has led, what we are seeing now and can see and may well see has led to social fracturing, whether we like it or not. You know, you mentioned Argentina before. Argentina's had serious collapses at times and huge social fracturing. But everybody has. Everybody. The United States of America has at we times. We have, although not so much in living memory that much anymore. No, no, no. It's not. No. And I'm glad it's not in living memory. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Me, me, me too. But at the same yeah. time, we may not have enough the, the resilience that some other countries like Argentina do that this is a every couple year thing for them. Every 10 years. But I will just, you know, the United States is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, etc. I hope that we never have any problems that other countries have had in situations like this. If you invest in the markets and you're not always worried, you don't know what's going on. But let me just go back to something you said, Pax Americana. Yes, that's Washington puts out that propaganda. But there was a study done recently. The United States has been a country since 1776. In all but 18 years, we have been at war. It's a horrifying fact. It's a fact. It's a simple historic fact. We are always at war with somebody. So I'm not, I'm not proud of this at all. Uh, it worries me even more. But for some reason, those people in Washington like war. We're not very good at it anymore. We haven't won a war in a long time. But they like it. And so Pax Americana worries me. And that's the way many people in Washington think. They think, we'll show them, we'll give them peace. <laughs> we'll send an army to give them peace. So I worry about a lot of things, and that's one of them that somehow or another, we, we, the Americans, we might stumble into a war because those people in Washington like it. Expressing concern about the perpetual state of war the United States has been in, Rogers questions the effectiveness of the Pax Americana narrative. Despite the country's continuous military engagements, victories have become elusive. He raises a red flag, worrying that a proclivity for war in Washington could inadvertently lead the nation into conflicts with unforeseeable consequences, much like historical events such as World War I. Referencing the outbreak of World War I, Rogers draws attention to how alliances and unforeseen events can trigger catastrophic conflicts. He emphasizes the need for caution, given the current geopolitical landscape, pointing out potential flashpoints like the Red Sea. Rogers underscores the difficulty of extricating oneself from wars once they commence, citing examples like the prolonged Vietnam War based on questionable decisions in Washington. Before the First World War, in 1914, the German royal family and the English royal family used to vacation together. They would have parties together. They would intermarry, etc. And then in 1914, only a few months later, they were slaughtering each other, hating each other, the whole world. And everybody, of course, in October of 1914 said, don't worry, this will be over by Christmas. And of course, you know, Six years, months later, everybody was saying, how the hell did we get into this? How do we get out? How do we get out of this crazy war? And you know, it took four years. Disaster, gigantic disaster. So when these accidents happen, whatever reason, and, and by the way, in that war, just a little history more than you might care about probably, but the Archbishop, the uh, our, no, the king, the emperor of Germany said to Serbia, or the emperor of Austria said to Serbia, because his son had been killed, assassinated in Serbia, these are non demands. You must do these things. Serbia agreed to eight of them. Serbia agreed to eight of the demands from the archduke of, what was he called, the arch something, the, the emperor of Austria. Serbia agreed, said, okay, we'll do it. The eight of his non demands. The old man, he was 86 years old, said, too bad, I'm going to slaughter you all. And the next thing you know, we were all in this gigantic war that could not end for four years. So these things happen, and you just mentioned, sure, I see what's going on in the Red Sea. You see what's going on. 
and who knows what we could stumble into. Most wars happen by people who make mistakes and they make accidents. And then a few months later, everybody says, how do we get out? The problem is, Adam, how do we get out of wars once they start? It's bad enough that they start. But then the problem is we can't get out. Right. Look at Vietnam. Vietnam was all based on fraud in Washington. It went on for over a decade because we couldn't get out. Thank you.